this example, we're going to use the website Daggety to draw a causal diagram and connect all of the different nodes and then look and see what nodes need to be adjusted for. Um, and we can also see all of the different testable implications to see which of the different nodes are uh, independent of each other or not correlated. Um, and we should be able to do all of that with just Daggety. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. If you open up a browser and go to daggety.net with two T's, so D-A-G-I-T-T-Y dot net, um, you should come to this website here. Um, ordinarily, I just go to um, this link here to launch Daggety in my browser. There is a way to download it onto your computer. I've never actually done this before, um, but you can try, I guess. Um, so I'm going to click on Launch Daggety here, and you should see something that looks like this. Um, it'll give you kind of a default DAG that's just there. Um, you typically want to just get rid of that. Um, you can do that by going to Model, New Model, and it should get rid of it, and you'll have an empty canvas here. So what we're going to do is build a DAG um, based on the lecture from session four about um, the relationship between money raised and um, votes in an election. But we're going to make it slightly more complicated instead of just having three nodes. So to add a node, you just click somewhere on the page and then you name it. So we'll name this money raised. And we'll just hit enter. And now we have a node here. We can move it around. We can do whatever we want with it. Neat. Um, I can click somewhere else and add another node. We'll call this total votes. And now we have money and votes. And we can add other things um, like candidate quality. Um, so this is the example we had from the lecture here saying that quality causes money to be raised and quality also causes votes. Um, we can add a couple other things that might influence the money that you raise and the votes that are won. Um, the party that the candidate is in might influence um, their quality or the money raised. Um, the district that they're running in might also influence that. Um, a candidate might hire a campaign, a campaign manager, so hire a campaign manager. Um, we could say one election because that is related to like money raised will cause you to win an election. Having lots of votes will cause you to win an election. Um, so we have all these different nodes. What we need to do now is connect them. So to connect them with Daggety, you select a node and then it'll have a thicker border around it. And then you click on the node you want it to link to. So we're going to say that money raised causes you to get a specific number of votes. And now there's a link between them. Um, we can also say that candidate quality causes money to be raised. Candidate quality causes votes. The district that the candidate is running in causes money. Um, the district also causes votes. The party that the candidate is in um, will cause money and will cause votes. Um, we can also say having lots of money can make it so that you can hire a campaign manager and then hiring a campaign manager can make you win more votes. Having lots of money can make you win the election and having lots of votes can make you win the election. So we have all of these different things linked here. We can also say there's something that we can't really observe, maybe like history, that explains why a specific party might have more people or more supporters in, um, in a district. Um, and why a district votes the way it does. And so we have this thing causing party, this thing causing district. Um, and so here's this semi-complicated DAG here with all of these different nodes. Um, what we need to do now is tell these nodes, there's some of these that are important. Um, some of these are like one of them is the outcome. Total votes right here is the outcome of money being raised. This is the thing we care about. So if I select total votes, I can come over here to the side and tell this to be our outcome. And it will color it with blue and then add this, this uh, line on there. I don't know what the line is for, it's just there. Money raised, that is our main treatment. Um, the main question we have is, does raising money cause you to win more votes? So we're gonna select money raised and then I can tell it to be the exposure. Um, Daggety was written for epidemiologists and so it uses that kind of language here instead of instead of saying treatment or program, it talks about it using exposure. 
um, which is the same thing, it's the treatment. So if we click on exposure, you'll see that it is green with a play button on it. So that means this is the, um, the treatment, which then causes the outcome. And already we can see that there's some issues here. Um, before, all of these nodes were gray. Um, only one of them is gray now, one election is still gray, but these others turned red. They turned red because Daggety knows that these are um, uh, backdoors, they are confounders. Candidate quality here is messing up the relationship, between, the relationship between money raised and total votes. Party is also doing that, district is also doing that. History is also doing that too, but we can't actually measure history. Um, we don't have a column in our data set explaining why a district votes a certain way or why a party votes a certain way. So what we can do is select history and tell it to be unobserved. And now it is light gray, meaning it's not actually measurable. We can't do anything with it. It is unobservable. Um, so we have three red nodes here and the arrows are pink because they're messed up. So what we need to do is figure out what backdoors to control for. If you look over in this corner of Daggety, it will tell you the minimal sufficient adjustment set or the things that you need to adjust if you want to isolate the relationship between money raised and total votes. So according to this, we need to, we need to adjust for candidate quality, for district, and for party. And if we do those, then that will isolate the money and votes relationship. So to adjust for something in Daggety, you select the node, and then come over here and tell it to be adjusted. And then we can tell party to be adjusted, and we can tell district to be adjusted. Um, those are all bold here now, meaning we've adjusted for it. And so now the relationship between money and votes is isolated. It is green, there's no red arrows messing anything up, and theoretically, if we say that this DAG is complete, then the relationship between money raised and total votes should be true and that will be the causal effect. Um, a couple other things to note here. Those were the back doors. Um, notice how we didn't adjust for higher campaign manager. That's because this is a mediator. So money raised causes a campaign manager to happen, which then causes total votes. If we adjust for higher campaign manager, um, then no, that will no longer be the total effect. And it even says that here. It says the total effect cannot be estimated due to an intermediate um, or mediator. Um, and so because we've adjusted for hiring campaign manager, we've removed the campaign manager aspect of money raised in total votes, and we no longer have the total effect. So we don't want to adjust for hire campaign manager. So we'll unadjust that. If we adjust for one election, meaning um, we only look at candidates who win, we don't look at losing candidates, um, that will be a collider. Because notice how money causes winning elections, votes causes winning elections. If we adjust for this, watch what happens to the coloring. It distorts the arrows. Now the arrows are all purple because we've included a collider and it's messed up our causal relationship. It's no longer identified. So we don't want to adjust for that, so we'll unadjust. And now we're left back with our main causal relationship that we care about. Um, the last thing we want to look at are these testable implications here, um, which are things that should be true if we look at existing data. So remember this upside down T thing means independent of or not associated with, or there's no correlation between them. So given all of these arrows, candidate quality should be completely independent of party. So if we run a correlation in R to see if there's a relationship between candidate quality and party, it should be zero. Um, and if it's not, then that means we're missing something and maybe party causes candidate quality. Um, if we draw that arrow, notice how that's no longer one of the testable implications because we said that there is a relationship. Um, to get rid of an arrow, you click on the beginning of the arrow and then click on the end of it and it disappears. Um, also, candidate quality should be independent of district. We can measure that. This gets a little bit more complicated. This is saying that candidate quality should be completely independent of whether or not somebody hires a campaign manager. So that means bad candidates will, will hire campaign managers, good candidates will hire campaign managers. There's no relationship between those for the same levels of money being raised. 
or that's what this, this up and down line means, that's given. So we would read this as candidate quality is independent of hiring a campaign manager given the same numbers of money raised. So if you look at candidates that raise very little money, there should be no relationship between quality and hiring a campaign manager. If you look at candidates who raise a ton of money, only them, there should be no relationship between quality and campaign manager. And you can actually look at those correlations in R to see if that is true. Um, and you can go through all of these implications if you want to make sure that there's no relationship. In theory, all of these things should be true. That party is independent of hiring a campaign manager for all the same levels of money raised. Hiring a campaign manager should be independent of winning an election for the same levels of votes and money raised. Um, so you can just go through this big list and check it all. Um, you'll notice that there's this button for exporting our code. If you click on that, um, it doesn't actually give you the code for creating this graph. What it does is give you the code for testing all of these implications. Um, and it assumes that you have a data set that has column names that are exactly this. Um, so I've, I've actually never really used this in real life um, because I typically like using like capital letters and spaces here. Um, I don't have a, history, or a column named history. Um, if I didn't unadjust that, then history would be one of these testable implications. And so I, I typically don't do that. If you do, let's see what it looks like. Yeah, it has this test implications thing. If you put this into R, assuming you have a data set with these column names, it'll go through and give you the correlation number for each of these implications. Um, and you want them all to be zero. But you can also just do it by hand and say, are these two connected? Are these two connected for same levels of money? Um, and in your problem sets in the future, um, with problem set three, where you're going to be working with DAGs, um, you'll, you'll be able to do that um, with R. So we'll get to that later. But that's, that's what this is doing here. Um, and so that is how you use Daggity. You draw nodes. You draw arrows between things. Um, you tell the nodes if they are exposure, outcome, adjusted, unobserved. And then it should give you a list of all of the different backdoors that you need to adjust for to be able to isolate the relationship that you care about the most.